What's up guys, Moogle Lord here, and today I wanted to revisit Dragon Ball uh, Sparking Zero. Now, I know a lot of you guys are really hyped and anticipating this game. This game hasn't really been on my radar, but I've been keeping tabs on the community and keeping tabs on the updates of the content that's going to be available um, for this title. But I will say this, I totally underestimate the hype behind Dr Dragon Ball Sparking Zero because this game is bringing a lot of hype and um, people are really anticipating it. It's also kind of causing a lot of controversy within the anime fighting games or within the anime games uh, community as well as far as content creators are concerned about them. Some getting access or has special privileges to have access to this game before a lot of the smaller content creators to be able to get their hands on this game. But I just wanted to give you what my overall thoughts and how this is going to impact, I guess you would say the Dragon Ball uh, fighting games or just arena fighters in general um, moving forward into the next generation of arena fighters all in itself. So before we dive into this video, make sure to subscribe button and the notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. Now, I'll have to say this. This is going to be one of the biggest Dragon Ball, I guess you say fighting games of all time, especially for this, um, I would say, for this generation of, of consoles and this generation of gaming in general. I have never seen so much content that's gonna be packed into this and Dragon Ball fans, including myself, is will have a lot, will be eating from this because of what they had, the liberties they have taken as far as game modes and what you can possibly do. But it also makes me th think about you know the potential future for arena fighters in general because you guys don't know there's some arena fighters that are actually pretty cool that i really enjoy and i think that there's actually some potential in arena fighters now i know a lot of competitive players people who actually are die hard fighting game fans who like to play competitive fighting games you know when you see certain games that and you see the arena fighter aesthetic or the look or you you hear arena fighter a uh, 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 genre in its name itself a lot of them get turned away because when it comes to arena fighters most of the arena fighters aren't really competitive most of them are very casual um, but you do have some communities that actually like to compete in a lot of these games especially when it comes to like the Ninja Storm games which was ah, I wasn't really a big fan of the Ninja Storm games as far as the competitive sense um, when it comes to arena fighters but you have games like the CD of Final Fantasy which, uh, Fantasy, which was an arena fighter um, which I really enjoyed. You can definitely check that video out as well. But when it comes to Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, this game is something that was, uh, I guess you would say, anticipated for a very, very long time because this game derives from the Budokai Tenkaichi series, which everyone also loved and loved to death. I mean, Budokai Tenkaichi um, was pretty much a lot of people's childhood um, game back in the day. See, I'm old. I'm 37 years old. So I wouldn't say this game is my childhood, but I love the Budokai series um, in general or the Budokai series that that came before the Tenkaichi series because I was never really a big fan of the Tenkaichi series But I do respect what it had contributed within the arena fighter space and within the anime the anime game space um, In general and the fact is that many people were anticipating this um, Really really shows now to me in my personal opinion when I seen Dragon Ball Sparking Zero itself I was saying what is the need for this when you have games like Dragon Ball Xenoverse, which is still killing it to this day with DLC, has a shit ton of content. There's gamers that's still playing it, and I've also played it for some time, and I also even uploaded some content with me and my brothers, Keel Lancer and DX Strike, going online, competing and going against other, um, you know, created players, uh, 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 created, you know, fighters from other players over the internet. And I enjoyed it for what it was. It served its purpose, it served its time, and I moved on. So when when I'm heard about Sparking Zero, I was like, what's the point when you have Dragon Ball's universe that has the story missions, um, you're able to create your own uh, fighter, um, the arenas uh, are pretty much open arenas as well. So to me, it was like, it kind of felt like how you have Marvel versus Capcom, and then all of a sudden Capcom and Marvel come back together and decide to do an X-Men versus Street Fighter. Why would we want an X-Men versus Street Fighter when you got Marvel vs. Capcom that has every Capcom character and every Marvel character. It's not just boiled down to Street Fighter and X-Men. So that's how I kind of seen Spark and Zero, where you have a shit ton of things that you can do. Character creation, you know, story missions, and all this other type of stuff. Lobbies where you can have fun with your friends and everything. Just to boil back down to just an arena, a basic arena fighter, where you can't create your characters and have all those type of options. But apparently with Spark and Zero, they threw everything at the wall with this game, which in my personal opinion, this may be the best as far as content rich 
um, when it comes to Dragon Ball in general. And I think this is going to make a shit ton of money. I even think it's going to probably surpass Xenoverse as far as like uh, profitability and also popularity within the anime um, gaming space in itself. And why do I say this? Well, for starters, it's this one interesting mode, which I believe is going to give them or give this game so much life onto the future and beyond as far as content creation is concerned is this particular mode where you're able to create your own scenarios which i thought was pretty interesting when i've seen it um in the presentation that they presented you can actually create your own dream scenarios within dragon ball uh, sparking zero itself it has an actual editor you can put specific characters in place you can choose specific outcomes and cutscenes, introductions. So can you imagine what the Dragon Ball community is going to do? A lot of what if scenarios. Can you imagine how people can actually take the history of Trunks and do a retelling of it or change the outcome of the history of Trunks? There's so many things that you can possibly do um, with this um, content creation that you can do within this editor itself and it is very robust and I'm surprised of how robust it is and not only that you can set conditions um, as far as their health is concerned what the conditions is to defeat a particular enemy and you can create different scenarios or different outcomes based on those conditions as well so I can only imagine what you can possibly do I think the possibilities is going to be endless and I think when it comes to DLC for this mode because I think they will probably do some DLC for this mode to add more options to it so I can't wait to see what these fiends, these Dragon Ball fiends are going to do. I can imagine with Rhyme Style, Globku, Afro Senju, and a lot of these other content creators are going to do um, when it comes to this editor. And also I can't wait to see what the rest of the community is going to put together when it comes to some of these dream matches, some of these what if scenarios when it comes to this mode. So I think that's also pretty good. Now, there's also been some, some talks about how how the developers themselves were saying that they're not going really going for a competitive type of, of fight uh, arena fighter with Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, but they also made sure that they actually put enough in there because they said they actually been watching, you know, Dragon Ball Fighters, which is you know the game made by Arc System Works. You know, a lot of you uh, uh, competitive uh, fighting game junkies, you know, like myself. Um, who like to have you know some competitive fighters and everything they've been watching them and they've been saying that they wanted to create a mixture of something that everybody can enjoy where you can have some of that competitiveness that's in it while the casual players have a shit ton of options and, and, and modes that they can play around with and the thing is when it comes to character unlocks they also kept that in mind where you have competitive players maybe they don't want to uh, 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 spend you know, playing a variety of modes just to get all the characters that they want when you can just stick to one mode that you like and you can unlock those characters just by playing that particular mode that you enjoy the most. So they made sure to balance it out as far as collecting characters to make the content feel more uh, jam-packed. And not only that, when it comes to, I would say, the competitive aspect, you have a team mode on there. Now, what's interesting about the team mode that they borrow some aspects from other type of like strategy games where they have a point system. Now, when where this is where you have the competitiveness, and this is where you have the casual aspect, because the developers themselves said that when it comes to this game, is that they weren't really looking for like keeping like looking for balance in mind, is because they actually make the end make the characters a uh, 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 reflect how they are as far as their strength is concerned, found in the manga and the anime itself. So if Goku is busted in the manga and the anime. Goku is going to be Goku is busted in the actual game itself. You got characters like Chasu and Yajirobe and many of the other weaker characters. If they were weak in the anime and the manga itself, they're going to be weak in the game. And it's going to be able to reflect that when you have these characters compete against one another. Now, what's interesting about this is them knowing that's in mind, they also did put somewhat some type of balance feature when it comes to your team composition because there's a point system where each character are worth a certain amount of points. Now, I think you have a total of 15 points, so each character takes points with from within that 15 point pool. So that also uh, determines of your composition of your team itself. So if you pick a character that's super strong like Ultra Instant Goku, that's gonna wipe out most of your points, which means the rest of the remaining points left 
you're gonna have to have weaker characters on your team. So you have to find out where that balance at. Do you wanna go with a powerhouse team? Do you wanna go with a well-balanced team? Or do you wanna have as many points as possible and work within the means of those points as far as having a weaker team and have a better strategy? Because when you have a weaker team, that means you also have more chances. That means you can have more characters. Instead of having three characters, you could probably have five characters or however the limit of characters you can have on a team and you can work within those means itself. So they did keep that competitive mindset in mind for the people who went to compete. And I love the fact is that um, it actually speaks to the heart of Dragon Ball and the essence of Dragon Balls, especially during some of the combats with the actual environmental damage. You can actually knock someone into a building and some of the buildings actually have interiors where you can fight inside shopping centers and everything. And also, if you're using a big power blast within the Tenkaichi tournament arena, the crowd actually leave and disperse and you can blow up the arena and then now you can fight within that within that area itself that the arena is going. So I think this is going to be actually pretty cool. And they said it's old, it's like what, 181 characters? 181 characters is found in this game. Which means they put a lot of these characters in this game for the simple fact is that they want you to play with that editor. I'm telling you, I think that the heart of this game is that editor to create your own content and not only that you can upload the content and then download the content uh, download the content from other players other content creators so i can't wait to see what people do especially on youtube and then especially if it's, if it's coming out on pc so pc players will be able to mod even that itself to be able to produce even more things unique things so i can't wait to see what they're going to do um I, this is going to make a whole lot of a shit ton of money Especially when it comes to DLC, it already has a lot of characters. To me, I think the only ripoff is the whole character part because, you know, these characters, they're just transformations of the same characters and they just have that look, you know, they have little variations in how they play, but essentially the same character. But also when it comes to the team battle itself, if you pick the transformation, that takes more points. So you also have to think about, okay, maybe I should start off and just pick the base form since it costs less points. And just because you start at the base form, you actually get more buffs as you progress through the different chains of levels of that character um, progression in their transformations. So there's a whole lot of this stuff here um, for you to enjoy and, and for you to like. Me, on the other hand, I'm gonna wait and see how it plays out. I'm more I'm more so particularly gonna, gonna pick up this game during the Christmas holidays. Because, I mean, I have so many games to buy. So many, so many games to buy. Especially this month, um, you know, as, as far as um, GRPGs are concerned. And I got to pick up as well. And then next month, there's some other titles that I need to pick up. So, I'm going to push this until December. I think that would be a good holiday gift to spend over the holidays to actually play this game um, as well. And to be able to live stream it and just enjoy it with a lot of you guys in the Discord um, as well. But I definitely want to get thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero? I think this game is going to do phenomenal in terms of sales in terms of hype generation and as far as content is concerned from the community itself and i'm looking forward to see how all that shape up and i'm also looking to see if there's going to be a competitive scene i know they're not going for competitiveness but look at what happened to smash brothers can this also happen you know same with dragon ball sparking zero and the arena fighter that people are actually going to take serious so i, I definitely want to see how that's going to shape out so if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe button for more notification for more gaming content here on this channel. This is Moving Lord, signing off. I'll see you game fiends later. Peace out.